welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where Dr. Janine Krause, that's me, gives you, a health junkie, a weekly dose of tools to help you increase your energy and resilience to life stressors. The Health Fix Podcast is sponsored by Blue Blocks. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X. Those guys are blue light blocking glasses. And let me tell you, I have been using their computer glasses for over a month now, and I have not had any headaches. I'm not feeling fatigued at the end of the day, and I am feeling great. That strain from me being on the computer and having these awful fluorescent lights above my head has gone away. So I challenge you to check out Blue Box, B-L-U-B-L-O-X today and see what they can do for you. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause, and today I have Christian Elliott on the podcast. I'm super excited because he and I have a lot in common, especially in terms of working on health at a grassroots level, meaning we're trying to get you guys thinking about you have everything inside you that you need. You do not have to be searching for supplements. You don't have to be searching for the cure. We're looking at how can we help you be a better human being in terms of your health and all the things, especially the mental aspect of it, that where we get in the way of getting to our goals. So Christian's the CEO of True Whole Human, where he and his wife, Nina, have helped thousands of people achieve their health and physique goals. And this is he's been doing this since 2005. That is a long time. I was still at Bastyr then. So I didn't even get out of naturopathic medicine school then. He also has an incredible blog, which I highly, highly, highly recommend you check out. It's called Deconstructing Conventional. He's been featured in Men's Fitness, Huffington Post, CBS, and many other major media outlets. And today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest factors that I think that sets us up for trouble is our own limits we set upon ourselves. And we're going to talk about how we can mentally train yourself to bypass your own limits. So Christian, welcome to The Health Fix. Thank you very much for having me. Well, we're going to have some fun today because I love talking about mental health. I love talking about how it plays into our physical health. Because at the end of the day, after being a doctor for almost 15 years now, I've realized that I'm not here on this earth to help fix people. I'm here on this earth to help guide people on their journey to optimal health. And this is what you guys do. And I found that you have such an incredible website and especially your quiz that you have <laughs> that kind of lets you know what kind of person you are in terms of transformation. And so Christian does body transformation, folks. I mean, we're getting you healthy at the most fundamental level. So tell us a little bit, though, about how did you and your wife decide to embark on such a fun adventure? Oh, man. Well, it, it wasn't because we necessarily wanted to. It was shortly <laughs> after we got married. So back in 2003, um, I had been not healthy for a couple of years, I guess you could say. And so it became, shoot, I just got married. I am not in the best health. And what's going to, what's this going to look like when I'm 50? Like I, I fast forward to that. I said, this is not going to be acceptable. I have to figure out how to get back in front of this. So I um, had the good fortune to find a group of doctors who had uh, outside the medical realm who just knew how to put my health back together. And so that pr really started me on a quest of like, I have to do something. I was sick frequently. I had degenerative joint conditions and just you know, I'm, I'm looking at not being able to play with my kids. It hurt to snuggle, just the basic things you want to be able to do to live a good life. And I realized I need to, to change how I'm thinking. So I, I met with a, a group of chiropractors actually that, that got me back on the path to wellness. And when I had that experience, I'm like, gee whiz, why is this not normal? Why is this not on the cover of Time Magazine? How is it that so a group of a half dozen medical doctors couldn't help me, but somebody outside that system did dramatically. And now I'm thinking, well, shoot, how many other people, like especially family members or friends, have similar issues going on or similar challenges and don't know of the options that are transformative? So really, it started as a hobby and just friends who saw me transform asked about what I was doing. And then it went from, you know, friends to people who wanted to pay me for some of my time and my knowledge and, and it eventually grew to a business. And so for whatever reason, I have a brain that really likes complicated and it likes hairy problems. I, I, I see complicated and I see opportunities for strategy and a way to find an answer where it had been missing before. And so that complicated brain just led me to study like what other paradigms, what other radical information about health am I unaware of? And we, so we originally conceived of having some sort of retreat center where we would step back and we would extract people from society and teach them and change their lives. And it eventually dawned on us 
our lives were not changed in a retreat center. We we had to slug it out in the day-to-day and to figure out wrestling with our own limitations and what we don't know and how do you make this autopiloted or what do you do when you don't feel like it and all the different aspects of it. So we switched from a a retreat center idea to what if we built a, a facility where we could collect as many holistically minded practitioners as possible. So we you know, short version we built for nine years, we had a brick and mortar location. We grew to about 10,000 square feet. We had, you know, all sorts of different uh, fitness disciplines. We had chiropractors, personal trainers, massage therapists, acupuncturists, naturopathic physicians, nutritionists, group fitness, just all in one place. And about four years ago, we took that knowledge. We transitioned it into a virtual world, uh, much less stress, you could say in this (laughs) type of arena. And so now we, we grew from, um, just a basic quest to get our own health back and solve our own problems to um, never quitting on the question, what does it take to actually create a breakthrough for someone? What does it mean to have a transformation where you can mark a moment? Like my life hit an inflection point and I went somewhere different and I never went back to the old me. So that's really the, the short version of the last umpteen years, but here we are today. You know, it's, it's true. Having a, a, tra- a traditional kind of brick and mortar does give you a lot of foundation for like, okay, how can I take this and, and go to the next level and help more people? Mm-hmm. I'm definitely in that case right now. I've got my mm-hmm. brick and mortar. We're, you know, transitioning more towards online. Totally mm-hmm. makes sense. But what you said about that inflection point where you're like, okay, I'm never doing X, Y, or Z again, and I'm going this direction and finding the psychology of that, because I think this is something that we hear over and over again from, from probably clients and patients and, and on my end of, of the, yeah, I fell off the wagon again. You know, I broke the diet again, or I just can't seem to get healthy. I just can't seem to get these different, you know, habits to, to take hold. And you talk a lot on your website about, and, and especially in the quiz, what kind of person are you? what Mm -hmm. kind of individual are you? And so of course I took the quiz because I'm, I love taking quizzes and I'm a DA. And so I forget what that means right now. My brain just went blank. Tell me what that means. Mm -hmm. And, and, and where, what am I? Yeah. Driven (laughs) achiever is what we call that. Yeah. So you want to know the history behind that or kind of how we got to that particular? Absolutely. Tell tell us. Yeah. So in the, in the effort to, you know, legitimately say, how do we transform someone's life. My original thinking was just, I just need to know more. I need to have other disciplines. I need to be able to address all the physical problems that come from different angles. And eventually I had a lot of them and I had ability to approach people's physical health from so many angles. And then I started realizing, sheesh, our success rate isn't that much higher than the normal population because there's this, there's other elements of what it means to be, what we call to be a whole human to look at our lives in an integrated way and say, what else is influencing this puzzle? And so there's the physical biological laws of physics. We all have to practice that. You know, Nobody's going to argue you need sleep and water and hydration or uh, nutrition and stress management and so on through the list. But yes, I know that, but how do I make myself want to? And so what Nina and I did, we basically had a, an opportunity to step back and, and just analyze and look at the clients that we had had over the years and say, what were the traditional or typical paths that they went on? And what were the common roadblocks? And so my wife loves studying the Enneagram and different ways of understanding the human psyche. I've been fascinated by psychology and human nature and such for a long time. And so we just kind of sat and we took a you know multi-month process and just said, what are these typical stories that keep coming up? And we didn't know how many types we'd end up with, but we ended up with four that were fairly straightforward. If somebody that thinks like this probably has this type of belief behind what has kept them stuck, or they have these fairly predictable health challenges and mental roadblocks that come up. And so as we looked at it, we ended up with four different types. There's a driven achiever, what we called a methodical strategist, a social go-getter and a bold competitor. And those became really, we had, we had to come up with, well, what kind of questions, how would we get to know this person? So the, the quiz basically came from trying to help us more accurately identify what were, what are going to be some of the psychological barriers here. And um, so that's really some of the genesis behind the quiz. Um, and then we put it, there's a whole nother layer of what is the context of this individual person's life? Because that's different for everybody. And if now, now my brain that loves complicated gets to go upstream and all this health issues. And then I got the psychology issues. And then now I actually have to work it out in a real scenario of this person. Have, they have kids or do they not? How many hours do they work? 
how much support do they have or not have? And all of those factors are highly relevant to create change. And so that really became kind of our three areas of focus when we go to help someone change. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I think it's important because, you know, you go to the doctor, they're not going to analyze what type of person you are in terms of your habits. And, and are you going to, you know, follow through on a program? We're just like, okay, here's your program. You know, and it took me years to realize that obviously there's more to it than here's your supplement program. Here's your dietary program. Here's your, this program, that program, or even your fitness program. Now you go do it. Yeah. Right. That doesn't work out even in my own self, you know, you, and as you get older, you start to analyze yourself a little bit more. And I've been definitely on that journey. So now I'm like, oh, that's why I wasn't getting as many results as I wanted to get. Yeah, so yeah. you take all these quizzes, someone c- well, would call you correct. You know, mm-hmm. you, you do a discovery kind of call mm-hmm. with someone. And, and then at that point, you're going to be able to kind of know more or less better than they do what they're going to be having trouble with. Correct. Well, I, I have good intuition by now. I, this is not my first rodeo. There's probably not an excuse someone could come up with where I think, oh, I've never heard that before. That's weird. Um, <laughs> so there's predictable patterns, but man, each person is so unique and it really does it. Even through the intake forms, I tell people it's going to take me three, four, five sessions to start to go, oh, I think I know this person. I'm about to preempt the excuse you're about to make or I understand a deeper part of your past and how that is that belief or that rule you have lived by for a long time is now influencing the way you think. And until we clear that bottleneck in your thinking, we're probably not going to get the results you want because you're limited, not by what your body can do anymore, but, but why, but by the narrative you're believing. And once we look at that non-judgmentally, just look, where did that belief come from? I get, I get paid to be a very curious question asker and um, to not do it with judgment, but to do it in a space of love and psychological safety that says, my job is your best interest. So help me understand this. And as we work through their, you know, what we call their shadow side, that everybody's got strengths that they bring to the table, but the strengths also have typically a reciprocal weakness. And in being able to see, are you someone who just runs your engine so hard that you think you can do all the things and you finally realize you can't, or are you just really down on yourself? Your confidence has eroded and you keep telling yourself you can't, so you won't. And any number of different ways it could go. But what's fun about, or been refreshing for me about studying human nature is when you get down to it, we all want the same stuff. We're at, the, at a base level, we all want romance and love and adventure and significance and dignity and a feeling of contribution and so on and so on. There's a dozen or so basic human drivers And when any one of them are not being met, we will be emotionally stunted. We will be frustrated and we will find some way to go meet that often in semi-destructive ways. Uh, But it's the recognition of where we're stuck. It's the self-awareness that says, oh, here comes that pattern again that lets us go, how would I outthink this? What would I do differently? And what would happen if I didn't believe that about myself? And so I just get to ask questions to help people know themselves so they can figure out where they're stuck and move forward. That's cool. That's cool. I'm thinking like a lot of people right now that are listening might be like, okay, so are these phone calls? Are these zoom calls? Is it, you know, much like what we're doing right here, just chatting one-on-one. And then I think I'd be going, okay, are you going to ask me all these questions or do (laughs) I have to let, do I do homework? You know, for I love to get into the nitty gritty of programs because I think it's fun psychologically for people to kind of go like, what am I getting into? Yeah, yeah. Also the questions, like you were saying, I ask a lot of questions and I think for a lot of us, we just haven't asked the questions as to like, huh, why do I seem to do okay on a health plan? And then all of a sudden I just fall off. I just get, I get bored or I, I, I start craving things and I can't control it. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's more like, I just can't seem to stop emotionally eating. Like what? I, I don't know what that is. And, and I'm sure you've heard these things over and over again during visits with you. Is it, is it questions? Is it, are folks filling out, you know, is there, are there journals they're working on? What, what's kind of in the nitty gritty of, of your program? If you don't mind telling us a little bit about what, what folks are, would be oh, up to. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, a, a typical journey, they, they all pretty much start at the same place. And that's just with an intake of, of us getting situational awareness of where they are. So there's, we have a, what we call a health audit, which is just a long history of, where you are and how you got there. And then we have what we call a habits audit. So we're basically looking at health as holistically as possible, trying to figure out where the compact compound effect is working for you or against you. The things we know we have to practice in the major areas of health or what it means to live a well-lived life. How are we doing? 
And if we can audit those and we can come to sober awareness of what those things are, then we start to chart a path forward. We, we, so after that, it, it gets pretty person specific where, where they would go. Some people, we dive right into life coaching. Some people, we go straight to nutrition. Some people, we go to fitness. Um, some people, we have to take through a fairly lengthy goal setting process of really getting granular. The, the, the goal clarification process, we call it, is much more thoughtful than most people are used to spending on their life and, and facing questions of values and beliefs. And so what that looks like practically, we have a, we have a group call once a week, and then we have uh, people can get my schedule as often as needed. And so um, that's just the touch point to, okay, I've, I've learned this material. I've worked through these questionnaires. What's next. And, and really it's, it, it, people often come to us for health. It's the main driver. I, I, this, my knee hurts. I have indigestion. I have pictures, whatever, but we probably spend 75 or 80% of our time figuring out where they're actually stuck. And the tactics of health, in my opinion, are often the easiest parts to sort out. It's not like you have three eyes and two livers and, you know, your, your glands work differently than mine. It's the same human physiology. We have to work within the laws of, of what we do, of, of how the body works, knowing that our job isn't to make the thyroid do something different. Our job is to empower the body with the platform and the habits that produce health and just figure out how to do them for a long enough amount of time. And it is in the effort. Okay. We have a clear plan. We've set out, we know exactly what direction we want to aim because I could give you so many health habits to practice. You wouldn't have time to live your life. You'd be doing health habits all day, which is not very helpful. No, so we have to get strategic. What are we, so we, there's certain, you know, if you don't have nutritious food, we're kind of dead in the water. If your gut doesn't work, if you can't digest the nutritious food that you eat, we're still stuck. And if you're, but if you get your nutritious food and you get your digestion humming, and that can help sort out your hormone system. If you get movement, not just exercise, but movement back into your life and you have an awareness to look for where am I creating this structural stress? Where am I creating the emotional stress? What boundaries have I not set up and protect we just, we install a new operating system typically within the first month that helps you think differently and evaluate your life from a whole life, whole life success perspective. If you're looking at um, a meaningful life, health fits in there somewhere. But if you have no concept of what a meaningful life is, the health habits start to feel like, well, what's the point? And it's bouncing back and forth between the chicken and egg question of does the purpose need to come first? Or does the health need to come first? So I feel like I can run after that. Health. Like it, so they go, they, they're so intertwined. I've learned not to bother trying to separate them anymore. I just, I have a kind of a, a routine of a rhythm of questions I take people through. And after we've really gotten to know them, it can go any number of different directions. But anyway, I don't know if that, that quite answers your question. Sometimes we go to the, the personality type stuff, but often it's health and sometimes it's fitness, sometimes it's nutrition. And um, we just do engagements over the course of X number of months, depending on how significant of a transformation someone's looking for and how likely they are to get stuck along the way. No, that's perfect. It gives, it gives us really good insight so that folks kind of get a, get a sense of what it's like to work with you, but also kind of what they might be in for mm -hmm. as well. What's the average amount of time that you spend with someone in terms of not in a visit, but like how many months on, on yeah. average, do you average spend Average. Yeah, the average person really sticks with us for about a year. Um, okay. The you know we have some people have been with us over four years now, um, oh. but really the you know the shortest we'll do is three months. If you've got let's say hundred pounds to lose, there's no way I can get that off you in three months. Like it's, it's just it, and sometimes people without a lot of weight to lose, but some significant health debt they want to pay back, and you know it could be an autoimmune condition or digestive woes or whatever. Um, you can make good progress in a shorter amount of time, but often it's not the physical stuff that is the block. It is the mindset stuff. It's the emotional baggage. It's the, I always get to this part and fail. And this is where I always get frustrated and I don't know how to get past it. Sometimes that, that once people get in, they're like, Oh, I see why people stick with this for a year. It's we're changing the way that you think we're changing the way that you live your life. We, we named our program, the healthy lifestyle reset. That was the most accurate name we could think of for what we're actually doing. And to reset your life, the way that you have behaved, if you can go through every birthday and holiday and season and, Oh, here's that pattern again. Like if you live somewhere where it gets cold in the winter, it's probably going to get cold again next winter. And you may not feel like exercising next winter. So we should probably come up with a plan for that. And so that that's a the longer answer to your question, but usually it's about a year that somebody sticks with us. 
Oh, that's great. That's great. And I think that leads into some of the things you were saying. Like if you find that every winter comes up and you don't feel like exercising, we need to preempt that and go, okay, what are we going to do about that? This is kind of going into that mentally training yourself to bypass your limits because yeah, it seems yeah. like all of us have our little stops and, and different things along the way. Like me, for example, I'm, I'm going to use myself because I'm here and I great example. If there is fresh bread, like a baguette, and I smell that thing cooking, I have the mission that I'm going to devour that. Like, that's just my brain is like, this is what's happening. It's like game on. And so, you know, we have all of our own little things. And of course that limits me because if I happen to live near a bakery, Lord help me, (laughs) I will have a, a problem. And so we have to kind of think about like, where are we setting these limits on ourselves? And, and for me, you know, I I'm joking about my pastry habit, but it's, it's real. It's, it's a real thing. Um, which is why I don't live near a bakery because now I know that that can't happen. I actually in Mexico lived near a bakery and a tortilla shop on either side of the house. Oh my gosh. I 170 pounds, like nothing. Cause it was, it, it was there. Right. So I think a lot of people have these sort of things, which are like their, their limit teams. Um, can you talk a little bit about the most common kind of limits that people have, like what you see over and over again, where, where people are really setting a limit on themselves and, and their success with health yeah. and lifestyles? Yeah, there's, I guess there's so many I could pick, we could fill a few hours with it. But I guess some that are coming to mind as you were talking, I was thinking, trying to think about that particular scenario. And one of the things I've, I've said to clients that tends to resonate or help them like, oh, that's a totally different way to see it is we have this idea or societally, at least there's this perception that if I'm going to get healthy, I have to deny myself. I have to just muster up, lather myself up with willpower and mm-hmm. soldier through this and take it for the team. And I want this, but I'm going to resist it. And um, I'm, I'm denying myself the pleasure of the bagel or the pastry. And, and the way I try to frame it or flip it in people's heads is, it, do you think your body's like, oh my gosh, she's all your cells are like, crap, she's denying me this high sugar carb load. I wish I could get more of that toxic chemicals in my body. Your, your cells are not feeling deprived. They're feeling assaulted when you make particular choices. And if you can take the perspective of the cell or of the system of your body that will then be stressed by that particular, in this case, food, um, it starts to say, instead of having this combative relationship with your body, where it's like, I'm I'm fighting my body or my body's fighting me and I wanted to do this thing, but I'm make it, I'm gonna get my calories low enough and we're gonna make it lose weight. And you have this contentious relationship with your body or this idea that you're going to biohack it I have an aversion to that term on some level, because if you look up hacking in the dictionary, you're not going to find a positive association. It's like to cough forcefully or to nefariously sneak into something. And your body doesn't want to be hacked. It wants to be cared for. It wants to be loved on. And when you can see your, your, your body as your ally, and there's a partnership between you and your system, whatever you have done to it to this point, it's still showing up for you. It has fought through sleepless nights and too much alcohol or substance or whatever things you have thrown at it. And if you look at and say, obesity is actually your body doing you a favor. It's like, what What are you saying, crazy man? Your body is taking all this crap that you're like, oh, I don't know where we're going to store that, but we can't have it in the blood. The, the purging system's backed up, put it in storage. Like for whatever reason, I guess she thinks we need this. And it is doing its best to keep you alive despite what you throw at it. So what if we flipped the script and we did a little TLC and we, and we got that feedback where I have indigestion, I have my knee hurts, my headache, my brain fog, my hormones. And we said, well, thank you for that feedback. What am I doing that's making you feel that way? Oh, it's the pastry that I'm at. Thank, okay, thanks for letting me know. I don't want to feel like, Bleh. I want to do right by my body. Thank you for the feedback. Let me see if I can make a better choice. And it's the perspective for a lot of people that their body is their partner, it's their ally, it's on their team, and it's not volunteering information that, that is unpleasant because it's just trying to ruin your day. It's trying to give you actionable information that says, if we can make a better choice here, I can show up better for you. So that would be one of them. It's just the body is not your enemy is a big one that a lot of people have to undo that thinking initially before they start to appreciate it and love on it. Yeah. 
I think that's huge. I think that's huge because a lot of people come to my practice and say my, my body's revolting against me, you know, especially in the menopausal realm, we'll hear that my body is just, you know, freaking out. It doesn't like me. I mean, all of these things are, are, are real narratives that I hear over and over again. I mean, that that's a huge one. And maybe I secretly chose <laughs> the pastry thing to, to kind of highlight that, but it, it's, it's true. A lot of people have a lot of negative talk surrounding, surrounding their body. I think another major one, and I, I'm curious if, if you have this is, is that I'll hear the, the limiting factors. Well, my husband doesn't want to get healthy or I I can't eat healthy because I have to buy food for my kids and they like junk food. I don't know if you've heard these ones before. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, that and a hundred others. It, it, they're, those are like, you either find a way or you find an excuse is, is one kind of, you know, fairly blunt way to think about that. But when it comes to context and the associations that we have, David McClellan at Harvard did a kind of his life's work was on what is it that helps people have a more successful or less successful life. And the number one factor he quantified in, in all of his work was that our associations or what he called our reference group, the people we hang out with, have everything to do with the life that we do or don't live. And so to say that my kids or my husband is dragging me down, then there's, there comes an inflection point where you say, well, okay, what kind of associations do I need? I'm not above, no human is above being influenced by the people we surround ourselves with. And once we know that, perhaps part of the solution is plugging yourself into groups or coaches or counselors or therapists or whomever, who is you, they help bring up the average, they help bring out the best in you. They help you set up systems and boundaries and phrases that go through your head and ways of relating to other people so that you become an inspiration and you can draw a line in the sand and they can respect it rather than just you feel like a pushover and I'm the only one that has willpower here. And a lot of, it's interesting, a lot of our clients will end up having to have pretty difficult conversations with their relatives, with their loved ones. And that has the inability to know how to have those conversations or the I don't even know what outcome I'm looking for when I have these conversations. I'm not sure what I'm asking. It's the, the effort to figure out, okay, if this would be the logical things that would move me toward that. And I feel like I can't get there without my husband or I can't, I'm, I've got this ball and chain of, of an environment around me that doesn't facilitate change. Maybe I need to address that first. Maybe that's actually where my focus of effort goes first. And there's less effort on working out two times a day or whatever the drinking X amount of ounces of water and the focus there's a, okay, what, what's the alligator closest to the canoe right now? If that's it, then that's the one we go after. So anyway, a lot of different ways I could go with that, but I don't, did that get at kind of the question you were asking? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I mean, I think, I think it's a matter of, like you said, getting the alligator that's closest to the canoe going after what's most relevant, because I think a lot of people will be 85 steps ahead and not thinking about what the immediate factor is that's limiting them in that moment or in that segment of time in their life. Right. And, and I think there is a lot of, and, and I've just talked about this on a, another podcast just earlier this week was the, I don't knows. I don't know what's, what my limit is. I don't know what's keeping me stuck. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you deal with the, the land of, I don't know when, when you get that one coming out at you? Yeah, that one, usually we just work on a very logical plan. Like there's no way that we would argue that sleeping enough isn't good for you or that eating better isn't good for you. So we come up with, of all the things we could focus on, where do we feel like the compound effects is really working against you? And how do we flip that? So it starts to work for you. And inevitably in finding, okay, looks like an elimination diet might be the best path for you. Are you working on your, your PM, what we call book into them, your, your wind down routine so that you actually have the energy to get up in the next day or whatever that thing is. We start to work on, and we, we set an intention to work on that habit. We have some way of tracking it and a check-in and so on. And when it doesn't work, we have gotten closer to identifying the, I don't know aspect of it. I didn't know that this was going to be the actual thing. It's funny. I was doing a session with a client recently and she went through three dramatic emotional swings in one call. It was from like feeling rudderless. I don't know where I'm going. And then it was, okay, actually, I feel like I have a plan now. That makes a lot of sense. And there's this windfall of hope. And then she gets hit with this like anger, like, well, darn it. But if I do that, then this is going to happen. And then it was um, after the anger was clear, but then it was, then it was the like, yeah, but I don't know if I have what it takes. Like, then there was this feeling of like, 
I don't know if my confidence is ready for that thing. I didn't know those three were going to be the ones that came up. We just worked on what's going to be a logical thing to focus on first. And once we get that going, then we, it, it, this was all in one call. It doesn't always, you always get through them <laughs> that quickly, but sometimes you get the windfall of like, Oh, this is actually what's going on. It, it could take a little bit of time to tease that out. There's a reason people hire a counselor and they're with them for a year or more because once you have kind of identified one thing, once you've asked a set of questions that illuminates a particular blockage in your thinking, you start to clear it. What you typically end up with is finding the next one and the next one. And, you know, any one of us can have, you know, half a dozen different false beliefs or partially false beliefs that are so intertwined with a little bit of truth that until you actually shine the white hot light of good analysis and love and judgment-free strategy on that, it's hard to step back and say, oh, Okay. And, and to do it non-emotionally, because sometimes those questions become zingers, like, where did I get this idea that I'm not good enough or that I'm not worth it or whatever the thing is? That could be from your parents from decades ago, or it could be something your boss said at work, or it could be just an undercurrent of several different little pieces of evidence that you point to in your life that all reinforce the same narrative. And we have to go question the narrative and erase the lie that was part of the value that you assign to yourself that helps you say, oh, now I have a clearer picture of what was completely mysterious to me the last time I tried to get healthy. So. No, and, and I mean, that that's awesome you're sharing with us all of that information because I think a lot of people really do have it set in their head like, okay, because there's lots of three months, six month, nine month programs out there. And, and I think we do have it set in our head like if we're not progressing fast, like there's something wrong with us or it's just never going to work. And, and hearing that you have folks with you for four years, I mean, this is this is huge. I know a lot of people might be thinking, listen, it's going like, oh my God, four years having to get my stuff sorted out. Hey, it, time takes time is one of my friends say, <laughs> and, it, and you're on your own trajectory. And so sometimes things might take you longer than, than the average individual. So I, I find it fascinating that sometimes, you know, you might go through all those emotions in, in one visit and, and other times it might be one that you're just like ruminating on over and over until you kind of get that switch. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to turn it toward, towards finding, finding a little bit about if we get stuck with clients and we're having someone that's going repeating the same pattern over and over and you're trying to move them through. Tell us a little bit about what, what kind of things can we do in that case to help that individual who just seems to be stuck in the same pattern over and over again while working with someone in a health transformation program? How do we get them past that limit of that that, that circle stuckness, I guess you could say that I would, I would call my world. What, what do you guys do when, when folks have a, that kind of situation? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question because it's a frequent experience people have. So the, what, the way we've learned to handle it is we often pivot to a different type of trackable, quantifiable, logical behavior that has the potential to move the needle forward it also takes some of the pressure off to answer some of those tough questions. So easy example would be if you're, if you're working on goals and you're, you're, Oh my gosh, I don't know purpose. Like, I don't know how to answer these questions. That's a tough one. And why don't we try cooking? I'm about to do that. Or I'm like, I'm doing all this diet stuff. And if, you know, I don't know if I it's just a lot to change at once. And okay, how about if we just walk, right? How about if we just get an easy win? How about if we go step back and we do an ideal day exercise. There's so many different ways we can focus on the puzzle. That's what I like about complicated strategies. It's like, rather than take a bucket of water in a chain and just throw it on the fire and hope that we get it, we can do it fast enough. Why don't you surround the fire and throw water on it from different angles at the same time and see if you can't finally get some headway and feeling better. There's, there's an interesting dynamic or reality to changes. If you don't have the biological bandwidth you know, your brain fog or you're tired or your you're just digestion is not where you from pain, any number of these different things. It's hard to think big thoughts. It's hard to feel like you have the space, you're just frustrated and you, your brain isn't really firing on all cylinders. And so to think about deep, meaningful, emotional questions, that just feels like more work. And so sometimes let's just go for a walk. Let's go outside. Like, have you have a bad day? Have you cried lately? Like when was the last time somebody listened to you and creating space to practice something because confidence and success at the long game 
it doesn't have to be monumental. I'm going to work out two hours a day for six days a week. And it, no, you're not, you, that won't work. So let's see what we can step back and do that you could get good at. And it's stringing together a tiny little series of small wins over time where you can look back and like, oh, you know, now that I think about it, my foot hasn't hurt in a long time or my, I haven't had a headache. And it's just getting a lot, a lot of little ones. You don't have to swing for the fence to make change, but you, what's priceless in the human psyche is the feeling that I'm moving forward. Even if it's just a little teeny check mark box that we can say, yeah, it's better than last time. Or I, I did it. I, I showed up consistently for a week, whatever the thing is, I got to bed on time. I drank enough water. It can be so simple, but the little things compounded over time manifest into a different galvanization of your confidence to say, I did that relatively hard thing. Maybe I could do another one. So sometimes you just got to switch to a completely different aspect of, of the same puzzle. I know that sleeping better. I know that moving, I know that hydration, I know that nutrition is going to help. So maybe if I just pivot my focus a little bit, not take my eyes off the prize, it's not like I get to just ignore cleaning up my diet forever, but give me some wind somewhere. And when I feel the winds, I'm inclined to go back and fix the diet because like, oh yeah, that worked. Okay. Maybe I'm, I've got a little more bravery, a little more intestinal fortitude to say, you know what? I could like this diet thing's not going to beat me forever. Darn it. And you go back and you, you try again and you learn and you stack innovation and learning experience on top of each other until you finally crack the code on what's actually keeping you stuck. Ah. Oh. I love that. I love that. I think a lot of folks right now might be thinking just like me. I'm like, I'm, sign me up. I'm ready to do this. Let's, let's get me dialed in here. I'm like, wow. I even like fall over in my uh, sand here. I was like ready to go. I, I love this. I love this. And I know that a lot of people probably right now are going like, okay, okay. Christian's got some good stuff here. He's got a lot of good info and you've got a lot of different resources too on, on your website that help folks, especially your blog. And I want to go into the blog for a little bit now because the blog definitely sucked me in and, and folks who are listening, he's got a lot of really great information on what to do about our current situation with the pandemic and things of that nature. And really, if, if we're looking at how do we deal with, with our immunity, how do we deal with being limitless, let's say, it's, it starts with taking care of yourself. And, and your blog kind of tells us all kinds of different things all about what we need to do to, to be thinking about taking care of ourselves and all the different, you know, aspects there. Now with the blog, you're, you're blogging pretty often. It, it looked like once, once every week or so. Yeah. Something well, like yeah, it's, <laughs> frequency <laughs> is TBD and I like it depends on how significant the topic. Um, the COVID blogs typically take a little bit longer because there's so much research and, and linking I try to do to um, help weave together some of the themes that I'm seeing. Um, I've got a series on motivation that some of them come quickly and there's other ones. Ironically, I'm writing a series on how to stay motivated and I don't feel motivated sometimes to write those. And so then I have to sit back and face myself like, why is it that I don't feel motivated to work on this? What would make me feel motivated? What's robbing my joy or what's what puzzle what problem is bogging me down right now? So in terms of frequency, I try to get, you know, ideally at least a couple of months, but I don't always make it that, that frequent. Well, there's great information there. And I really appreciate you putting it out. You guys, feel, if you want to know the, the skinny on COVID and you want to know, should you get a vaccine? Should you not? I, I do recommend in, in gathering your information before you make your decision to check out Christian's blog and, and really just get yourself you know, learned, learned up, get all that information under about deconstructing conventional is the name of his blog. It's also linked on the website, truewholehuman.com as well. So you guys can find it there. Now, Christian, I just mentioned where to find you, but where else can folks find you online and, and where, how do they apply? I think there's a button on the website, but you tell, you tell us a little bit of how they can connect with you or if they have questions, what can they do? Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, so our, the two websites you mentioned, deconstructingconventional.com and truewholehuman.com are kind of the main hubs. And you can take our quiz there. You can uh, sign up for our mailing list at the bottom of any of the blog posts. And then you uh, email me, just christian at truewholehuman.com is another way. We also have some social media channels, but we're probably going to break up with the traditional social media and move to some more, um, I guess you could call them censorship-free platforms uh, in the months ahead. So for now, those the ones that we're on are on the footer of our website. You can check them out there. Um, but that's how you get a hold of us. 
Wow, well, thank you for, for letting us know about that. We'll uh, see where which ones you transition to as I will be heading to those as well. So we will be putting that out here in the next couple of weeks here. So Christian, thank you so much for coming on and sharing how to become limitless with folks and, and all the intricacies about your programs. And, and guys, this is true, true health transformation. We're not talking just like a get thin quick kind of program. We're not talking about something that's going to happen and then then you're left like guessing what to do this is sustainable health for your body it's big stuff christian yeah, thanks to you and nina for what you're doing we really appreciate you guys keep up the good work thanks for coming on thank you so much for having me thank you for listening to another episode of the health fix podcast this podcast was brought to you by blue blocks the blue light blocking glasses. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see me wearing my computer glasses. Those are the Galaxy version. They're fabulous. I have not been having headaches in my office thanks to those awful, awful overhead lights that we have. Those buggers are blah. So anyway, blue light blocking glasses, game changers for your health. Check out them at blueblocks.com.